Hey guys, welcome back to my training series here at Gold's Gym in Venice, California. I'm Rob Richards and on today's video, I'll be focusing on the rear deltoids and traps. So sit back, take some notes, enjoy. Let's get to it. one of my favorite exercises for the rear deltoids. It's kind of this third finger at the back, three fingers that make up the shoulder. We've got the front, medial, and the rear. And the rear helps a lot with moving the arm behind as it does with lifting and these kind of movements. But we don't really train as part of our normal workout. When you think of shoulders, really you've got the shoulder presses, some lateral raises, maybe a front raise, Rarely do we hit the rear deltoids with as much focus as we do the other muscle groups. And whether you're on stage, or we do photo shoots, or just build a more complete package, the rear delts, definitely a muscle group that you can't skip on. So today, we're training rear delts and traps, two muscle groups paired together, which don't really get their own full workout within most people's regime. So we're gonna focus just on those muscle groups today. Let's go a little heavier, let's work it up. Now the main focus with free weights is, first of all, our form. Position it so the wind that, almost like a, a bent over row. We're gonna keep the arms fixed as though we're doing uh, a chest fly movement, slightly bend in the arm. And we'll keep that arm in that set position using the rear deltoid to raise the arm up. Elbow about the same height as the shoulder, so no need to go all the way up here, but also you don't want to stop too low down here. One other thing, you don't have to have straight arms for this if you go too light. It's a small muscle, but it is quite strong. So build up to a weight that you can comfortably manage 10 or 12 reps, but still keep in good form. And if you find that bending over with dumbbells makes you a little bit unsteady, you can do this. Get a towel or some paper towel, support your forehead here, and without pushing too much down, just resting, you can use that to support your body, stabilize, and then raise up. Let me show you. All right, benefits and like pros and cons. The benefit of doing this, like I said, it stabilizes you. You can't go as heavy, otherwise you start putting too much pressure down through the spine and on the head, which is not a good thing. So if you're just starting out or you failed and you still wanna keep up one more set, this is a great method. Another way that we could do this, if you're a bit too unsure about standing, maybe your form's not quite spot on, and you can't execute that movement, and recruit the rear delts, is we can use a bench. And I'll show you that as soon as I catch my breath back. All right, as you can see, a lot more focus and concentration needed in that one. Why? Because we can't cheat. We're positioning our body against that uh, seated pad, so we can't swing it back and forth. much, much more feeling doing it on the bench. And the main reason for that is, A, we're supported, we also can't cheat, you can't swing that torso back and forth, like we do whether you want to admit it or not, but we all do 
when bent over using free weight. So by supporting ourselves on this bench, and most gyms don't have benches this tall. So how do you do that to be able to get that full length in the arms? Because you do want to keep tension on the muscle throughout that full set. Get a step up board or get a couple of plates, pop them under, lift it up, and there you go. You can get full length at the arms. You want to stretch out the rear delt, so don't just end here. Finish the rep. Down here, stretch, and then start to pull the shoulder blades back in and raise them back up. In fact, this right here is a really great little superset to go from the bent rear dumbbell flies to the head supported on the bench to finish off your final set or as a drop set on this bench and doing those supported rear delts. Plus, you have a little bit more variety of angles, more of a Y shape and that T shape. So mix it up, make sure you're hitting the rear delt from all angles possible. All right, let's move on. Set up exercise number two. Cables, we don't want to go too heavy. We want to make sure that we get that uh, contraction in the muscle without trying to force and break away from that technique. So we're going to cross a different hand. Our right hand takes that left cable. A little flick of the wrist, get the handle over. And it's all in the shoulders on this one. So. As you know with the cables, I like to do a little bit higher repetitions, 15 reps, and the reason for that, A, I'm not going too heavy, and B, it's more about muscle endurance, feeling that muscle work, feeling it contract, squeezing, flexing it at the end of each movement, because the great benefit of cables is they supply that same level of tension on the muscle throughout that full range of motion. So, first of all, you wanna make sure you actually go through a full range of motion. Hence why I'm stood back a little bit, my arms are stretched out, slight bend in the elbow, therefore I'm not keeping tension on the tricep. If the arms are out like that, you're creating tension, you're flexing the tricep, which is great, but you're taking some of that effort off of the rear delt. So keep the arm bent and make sure that the shoulder blades are pinching together at the end. As with most exercises, and especially machines, there's often variations, different examples you can do. This one is the typical one. It's my go-to for cable rear delts, keeping the arms a little bit higher, stood up. But there's a couple of times I might switch this up. One might be to lower the arms and actually perform it on my knees. Gives me better stability in my core. Another one, which I'll show you now, is to perform single arm on a kind of a pull through. And for that, you need uh, an adjustable pulley or swing arms like this, which we'll set up. One thing I really love about this variation is because you're doing a single arm, you get just that little bit more travel bringing the arms through. So it's a really good stretch for that rear deltoid. Plus, it's just a little bit extra that it has to travel now to pull the arm back out. Something that you don't really get when performing arms together because you stop here. Single arm, you get a little bit more of travel through. It's got to work just that little bit harder. So all of this comes down to really variation and a ton of different angles. So whether you train all of these in one workout, sometimes I might, other times I'll alternate the same exercise but just a slightly different variation of it from workout to workout. Therefore, I can continue with the same kind of workout but I'm always challenging my body from a slightly different angle, a different perspective and a different movement each time. Okay, let's move on. The third exercise for rear delts and for this, we gotta find a machine. So into room three, we go. Rear delt machine or flying machine, you can reverse it around providing the handles can come all the way. Most people, myself included, typically sit down and do it this way. I've actually found that by standing up a little bit further back, and if you can, 
press your chest into this to support you, you get much better angle and movement for the rear delt to work the way it should. Same basic principles. Slide bend in the arm, we try not to lock it full out. Again, that tricep activation comes into play. A few other points, hand movement as well. Some people prefer to hold on here, keep their arms straight and push out. Others prefer this outer grip and pull with their rear delts. Or you can even mix it up even more, do a reverse grip and push out this way. So I'll run through each three of the different hand movements. You guys can really see if at all it makes a difference on how the muscle works, whether you can see it. And uh, we'll do that now. So five reps on each. We'll do the standard, the outer, and the inner. And we'll see if that really does change how the muscle is working. I don't know about you, but only the first one felt right. Felt the most comfortable with the hands like this. I could get the better feeling in that rear delt as I extended the arm back. The other two, maybe because I was more fatigued because of that set, but with the hands on the outside, I don't have quite as much travel to get that full uh, distance between the movement. And then the hands reversed, a little bit more strain and pressure on the wrist. So, me personally, prefer to just keep it with hands in that neutral position. But there is one other variation we can do with the machine. <sighs> Let me show you that. So just like with that single arm uh, cable rear delt fly, this with the machine allows us to travel that little bit further with the arm. So good for either at the beginning during a warm up or as a superset or as that final set when you've reached your point of failure, you're gonna drop the weights down but you still wanna keep that intensity up. Full distance of the arm, great stretch in that rear deltoid and then keeping that bend in the elbow Extend the arm as far as you can, squeezing that rear deltoid. Okay, Whew, that's enough for rear deltoids. Three great exercises, all focusing on that rear, the back deltoid of that shoulder group, and a few different variations for each machine. Now, let's clean up, dry up, hydrate, and move on and focus on the traps. These muscles here, which like the rear delts, are positioned more to the back of the body, so it makes sense to kind of group them together and train them as their own workout. All right, so we all know shrugs. One of the best exercises for training, developing, and building up the traps. Tons of different varieties that we can do this. This trap bar where you actually stand inside and hold the handles in a neutral position at the side of the body is probably the gold standard for trap exercises. It distributes the weight evenly, puts your hands in more of a correct anatomical position as opposed to rolling your shoulders around or behind, although there is a benefit to that and I'll show you later with that. The only tricky thing about this is because of the way the handles are and the heavier you get, it becomes a little bit off balance that time. So if you do find that you're going heavy, you've got the trap bar and it's rocking back and forth and you can't hold it, 
I'll show you a great variety after you've done one more set on here. But you've got the barbell, Smith machine, other machines and dumbbells, all of which can help keep your arms at the side or slightly rotated forwards. So we'll get one more set here. It's got a little bit heavier too. Great thing about dumbbells is pretty much every gym has these. So if you don't have a trap machine or a Smith machine, even some Olympic bars, dumbbells, even if they're not too heavy, sit upright on a bench, have them at the side. And the great thing about this is because you're not holding a fixed weight or a bar, independently, you've got each arm holding a weight. You've got this slight curvature as you drag that shoulder up, contracting the trap, Imagine someone squeezing around your neck just here. You're trying to tense, create the muscles to be flexed, have tension in, contract them hard at the top and then relax them full length down. Let that muscle stretch out so that you're taking it through its entire range of motion. Now dumbbells I like to do after a trap exercise or an Olympic barbell shrug, hands at the front. And as far as straps, if I'm going really heavy, Wrist wraps around the bar allows me to manage just a little bit more weight, but I don't rely on them. That might come into play on the last set of one or two exercises, but as you can see, no wraps. Helps improve my grip, forearm strength, and I can really feel it working in the trap. So one or two more sets here, then we'll move on and uh, focus on the Smith machine. It makes a lot of sense to do shrugs on the Smith machine positioned behind your body. Because when you think about it, the traps are located to the back of the body. So doing it with the hands on the front is a slightly unnatural movement to the body. Having them behind keeps it more in line. You're more anatomically uh, in a correct position. Therefore, when you shrug, you get that full recruitment of all of the muscles deep within the trap, those type 2B, the growth muscle fibers. So, you can afford to go heavy on here. Plus, it's a supported movement. It's fixed, you can only go up and down. You don't have to stabilize it like you would on a free weight. But Olympic bar as well, on a squat rack or something that you can hold the bar after, have that bar behind, and it also helps you keep the arm in a straighter position. So you can get more movement up, shoulders up towards the ears, and really focus on squeezing those trap muscles. Now, I think we got a little bit heavy on here. We're gonna focus on eight to 10 reps. And we've got one more exercise left as a final finisher off for the traps. <sighs> definitely one of those more trickier exercises but my gosh is it great for really feeling it in a part of the back but quite honestly we don't often work with many of the other back or shoulder exercises believe it or not this does use a lot of the trap muscles but it's got to be the correct technique and form so finding a bench or an incline bench but I prefer a flat bench a little bit higher off the floor like when we're doing those rear delts you want to get it so that you can get arms at full length and then squeezing your shoulder blades and the traps, raise that bar up. Traps really come into play when your arms are in about this position and beyond. So don't try and cheat the reps, just get the bar up. Use a weight that's heavy enough but still not too heavy so that you can execute and finish off the full range of motion. Even just pausing a little bit up at the top to give that muscle just that peak contraction. So about 40 pounds is the most that I'll do on this exercise. Again, you can use dumbbells, perform this, a straight bar, even cable with a bar and having the cable coming beneath you. Small muscle groups, the rear delt and the traps, 
But like I said at the beginning of this video, they don't get the same attention and focus that we need to give them if you're looking for that complete physical package. So at least once or every other week, find time, prioritize, hit some weird delts, hit some traps, and combine them for an awesome workout. And on that note, that wraps up the end of another training video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it, maybe learned one or two things, definitely something to perhaps try in your next upper body workout. As always, if you haven't already, do subscribe, leave a comment, and also follow me on my Facebook. You can see a live Facebook stream every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I'm in the kitchen, I'm in the gym, doing nutrition training workouts and answering your questions in real time. So we'll be back here next week. Don't forget to subscribe to Josh's YouTube channel, Momentum Productions, see all the cool stuff that he's doing overhead with the drones, the cars, and out on location around Los Angeles. We'll be doing more videos every week, putting them up on my YouTube and other social media sites. So guys, enjoy the rest of your week, stay motivated, and check back. In a few days, we'll have another video up on YouTube, especially for you guys. See you then.